Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some amazing aquariums and fish from the Keystone Clash. They had a massive bowl, sold tons of display tanks. There are gonna be some fish here that are absolutely outstanding. Hope you enjoy the video. Appreciate you being here. The Keystone Clash was a fish show that happened in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, just about an hour or so outside of Philadelphia. So if you're in the northeast corner of the United States and you're always wondering why there are no aquarium conventions near you, this is one of them. And they have this thing every fall in September. So check it out next year. These were some of the tanks that were the part of the aquascaping competition. This happened to be Shelby's tank from Garden of Eater. There were lots of cool aquariums to see and so much fun to be there. Not only did they have all these aquascaped aquariums, but like I mentioned in the intro, they had the bowl show, they had panel speakers, they had presenters that were giving talks. I gave two that weekend. They had a nice place just to kind of chill out in a rather large vendor room. And you're gonna see some of the fish that were part of that vendor room and really good prices. So for rocks and wood and shrimp and fish, they had pretty much everything. So there was a lot to see here. For the aquascaping competition, there were 12 aquariums. I believe these were around 20 gallons or so. And I had never heard of most of the people that were in the aquascaping contest, so I didn't know what to expect. But then when I walked back there, there were a lot of cool entries. I'm just glad I wasn't the one that had to judge them. And what I also liked about the aquascaping competition, they displayed some really nice fish. And so here you're seeing some cardinal tetras. This was more of kind of like a, a, a wild type biotope. You saw the Daniels a little bit earlier on, and there's gonna be a lot of cool nano fish in these aquariums. This was Chattanooga Ed's Aquascape. Loved the black neons. By the way, we've done species profiles on these fish as well as a number of others. If you are looking for more information for some of the fish that you see in this video, check out the description below. There'll be a lot of species profiles for you there for a lot of the fish, especially the ones that we see later on in the bowl show. This was a nice tank. It had that little path. Uh, there was a few tanks or a few entries that had this type of kind of little walkway through the aquarium. I really liked it. love to hear from you in the comments section below which aquascape was your favorite like i said there were 12 i may have skipped one or two tanks unfortunately it's just when i was filming sometimes i would start talking with people and when i got the footage back i realized uh oh maybe i didn't film every single aquarium so at least for the ones that i filmed i'd love to hear what your favorite was here is a great aquascape with some ember tetras. Really love this fish. It's one of my favorite smaller fish out there. Just like the way that they behave. You can keep them in a nice big group. I believe these are some more ember tetras in this aquarium. Yep, more ember tetras here as well. Absolutely love these fish. Love the cardinal tetras in this aquarium. They were really showing off a lot of color all the way from across the room. And this is a nice fish and it's a nice aquarium for these fish because they look really nice when the tannins are in the water. We're gonna switch gears here a little bit. This was the Snow White Bristlenose Pleco. I hadn't seen these before and they were significantly lighter than the standard albino Bristlenose Plecos that you're probably used to seeing at most of the aquarium stores, local fish stores. So it's really cool to see these. Gonna have to add these to the fish room at some point. Here were some cardinal tetras. Now, I don't know if these cardinal tetras were part of the group that wound up going to the aquascaping competition. Sometimes the people who do the aquascaping competition hit up the vendors and buy fish there. But these were big cardinal tetras. It was pretty cool. Love the gold slash orange laser quarry cats. We've had these in the fish room a number of times. Probably one of my, well, certainly one of my top five, maybe top three quarry cats of all time that when you have these in an aquarium they absolutely pop with color as you can see here even in a bare bottom tank they had some epistles love the dwarf cichlids now i don't necessarily keep a lot of epistles because our water is on the harder side we've got a high ph and these fish would definitely prefer to be closer to neutral if not having an acidic ph would be even better for a lot of them but it's still really cool to see all the color their personality 
you've got at least a 20 gallon aquarium most likely you're going to have plenty of space for these dwarf cichlids so many different varieties and here you're just seeing a couple I was glad I got to catch these tanks right when I walked in the door. These are red empress cichlids. We have had these in our fish room before and have bred them. And it takes a while to get these up to size and up to color. And this vendor had so many really nice peacock cichlids. And if you're into that sort of thing, he was pretty much sold out by the end of the week. And that's why I'm glad I got to film it when I did. But what you're seeing here can take months and months to grow up. And so if you're ever at a swap or an auction or even a pet store and you see these fish, typically 20, 25 bucks at a swap, and you're wondering why a single fish costs so much, it takes a while to get these fish to this size to show this color. And so that's a tank that's being taken up. You're feeding that fish for months on end. And then eventually you've got to deal with some of the aggression issues. But these are, it was a really cool booth. Now this next one, also really cool on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, this was a booth that had lots of live bears. And so there were plenty of guppies and endlers and really high end guppies and endlers in my opinion, in terms of the color and their health. And when I was talking with the vendor, he had mentioned how painstakingly he had taken time to really make sure that he was bringing in the healthiest quality endlers and guppies and then breeding from those strains. And it was, it was very obvious when you look at these strains of guppies and endlers, how cool they were. Also really love the rice fish. They don't get enough love in the aquarium hobby and I'm not sure why. These are small fish, just like the guppies that you saw in the endlers. They're very, very peaceful and the way that they reproduce is pretty interesting. The female actually have the eggs attached to their anal fin for a period of time. And there are more and more varieties coming out. I saw a pair at a recent swap. They were pretty expensive. They were basically half blue and half silver. They looked awesome. So there are some really cool options when it comes to the rice fish. Now this is the bowl show. This happens to be Geophagus steindachneri. We've had these in our fish room before. Sorry for the stuff floating around. The purpose of a bowl show is to show off the fish temporarily for a couple days so people actually get to see these fish in live and in person. So again, they're basically in a tank anywhere from usually 10 to 20 gallons or so, depending on the size of the fish. And then they go right back to their home. And so it's really cool to see the Keystone Clash had over 300 entries in their bowl show and was so many different types. Yes, there were South and Central American cichlids like I'm showing you here, African cichlids, but it doesn't stop there. They had live bears, they had killifish and bettas and even saltwater and shrimp and snails. I did not even come close to showing you all of the aquariums. I just picked some of the ones that really stood out that were, quite frankly, some of them were easier to film than others, less reflection, and obviously some of the best fish in the display. Now, this angel here, was my one of my top three and probably because when i was in my late teens early 20s i had a veil tail angel fish just like this the body was much larger it was about the size of about the size of my hand or so but the fins were every bit if not even more elongated i saw this fish and it was just showing off it was it was definitely top three for me in the bowl show This was a blue dolphin cichlid like these, had them before. And again, they had so many different types of cichlids. This one was showing great color. There were some real sizable cichlids here. Here you've got a red devil that was probably at least 12 inches or so. So it was a big fish. These were also some of my all time favorites. I have two of these in our fish room. These are Mascaheros or Vieja Argentia. This one here to me, probably best in show and I know uh, it came very close to being that and it was absolutely remarkable if you look at the color and if you get this fish in the right light with the right background it looks even 10 times better than this again we've got two of them in our fish room that are approaching this size around 10 inches or so and these are stunning and it take a long time for these fish to grow to the size that you're seeing here with those perfect fins for me it was number one would love to hear from you once again for the bowl show which fish was your favorite I 
thought it was cool that they had both the short body and the normal green terror. These are fish that show outstanding color. The problem is anytime you have a fish with terror in the name, you gotta be a little bit careful about your stocking options. They can be somewhat aggressive, but if you can work your way through that, some of those fish have really, really nice color. Now, what was interesting about this particular show is they did allow for hybrids. There was a hybrid category. This is not a hybrid. This is a Brichardi. Have bred and kept these before. Really cool fish. But this next one, this guy here, this OB, the first time I walked by, I'm like, why is there a hybrid in here? And then I saw right below, there's a hybrid section, which I kind of like. Because this is one of my favorite fish in the bowl show, even though it's an OB cichlid and it's a mix. Here, here was a darter. Don't. Let people tell you that there are no colorful fish in North America because that just isn't so. There are, and this was pretty cool. Check out this long fin pleco. It's kind of rare that you see fins this long on a long fin pleco, and this fish was really large too, which is kind of cool. The rainbow fish here were awesome. They were showing great color. Now, you'll have to keep in mind for some of these, these display tanks, when I filmed them, there were still some bubbles on the glass, and it was just a matter of me getting around and being able to film so many aquariums, so I only had so much time. So in some of these, you're gonna still see some bubbles. They had just put the fish in, like is the case here. They weren't necessarily 100% comfortable in their surroundings right when they're thrown into the aquarium, and so that will explain some of the behavior. But the rainbow fish were generally showing some really cool color, and were very close to pretty much full grown for their species. was the genus Macropotus. I don't remember the species, but it was a cool fish, constantly active. And you really love to see that when you're displaying fish, swimming around, just kind of showing off. This was a really cool one, something I'd probably love to add to our fish room at some point. We'll see. We've got some fish tanks uh, switching up a little bit. This was a microtinopoma. We have these in our fish room. Little bit of a curvature to the body. That's not something I've seen in ours. This fish might be getting a little bit older, but it shows a lot of color in the right aquarium. Of course, we have to include the geophagus. This was uh, geophagus seven I. This is a really nice fish. Little bit, it still has some growing to do. Florida flagfish, there were like three or four entries for the Florida flagfish. and. Man, they were showing some great color. I love these. Great at eating algae. So if you've got some green hair algae especially, might be worth taking a look at. Then we had the killifish. Now I have not really kept any of the standard killifish, mostly because of the lifespan. I like my fish to live, you know, three, four, five years at least. A lot of the killifish, maybe you're gonna get a year, year and a half out of them. And then even as they get towards the upper end of their age range, sometimes they don't look the best after they age. But my gosh, I look at the colors on these fish. That is probably the main reason why people keep them. At some point, I think we're gonna have to start adding some killifish to our fish room just because I don't think I can pass up the colors and Joanna wants some. And so when you combine those two things, you probably are gonna wind up with some of these fish in the fish room. So looking forward to maybe doing a little bit more research. Again, I haven't kept them before, so I will be looking at those a little bit closer. So this was part of the Keystone Clash in 2023. Like I said, if you are looking for somewhere to go next fall, especially if you're in the Northeast, this would definitely be something to check out. There's plenty to do. It was a Friday and a Saturday all day, and I think everybody that was there had lots of things and to attend. There's talks and panel discussions and all kinds of stuff to see. Thank you so much for being here again. If you want more information on some of the fish featured in this video, check out the description below. There'll be species profiles for you down there. Appreciate you being here.